Francesco Borromini arrived in Rome during the second decade of the 17th century. He worked initially as a stonemason and then as assistant to various architects, including Carlo Moderno. But he soon developed his own exceptional and innovative style. He's responsible for some of Rome's most extraordinary churches and palaces. On your screen, you can see some examples. Borromini's life was marked by torment. He was highly ambitious, but struggled to stand out among his rivals. First and foremost among these was Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Work on St. John Lateran proceeded rapidly. But before it was completed, a dramatic episode took place in which Borromini was accused of murder. A body was discovered buried in the porch, probably killed by the artist's team for having taken a hammer to the new works under construction. Borromini was filled with dismay. Let's hear his outburst. Rage! Rage at seeing my works ruined! Rage and the contempt of that man who furiously attacked those marbles. So, I said to my men, catch him and teach him a lesson. Then I turned my mind elsewhere, as there was much work to be done. I was ordered by Pope Innocent to complete St. John Lateran for the holy year of 1650, and I had only a month left to the deadline. That's why those in Rome who say that Borromini killed someone while working in this holy place are liars. It was not me who struck him. Nor did I tell my men to finish him off with cudgels. I simply asked them to teach him a lesson to remind him of the respect he owed me and my work. I can't say whether the young man was mad or paid to destroy the work, but I have many enemies driven by envy or hatred who could do worse things. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened. Those people who go around saying that an attempt was made to bury the dead body in a hole underneath the porch of the church, aren't they my enemies? Should I be surprised? I should have killed myself before starting on the work commissioned by Innocent. Four years! And we had to prop up the existing ruins. Constantine's church had fallen to pieces. You didn't believe me when I said that the bell towers of St. Peter's would have collapsed on your head and Bernini's. And now you want me to work here, where everything is falling apart and nothing holds steady? You can repair, but you can't build. I don't want to do what Pope Julius did with St. Peter's. St. John must keep its original form and be only embellished. I did as I wished and was proved right, which was satisfying. The ceiling must be removed, Your Holiness. The wooden one by Daniele de Volterra is unsafe. No, it must not be touched. For crying out loud, I already have the finished drawings. There is no sense in saving the ceiling with the columns, niches and arches I've built in the nave. Give me free reign, Your Holiness, and you'll be completely satisfied by the vault I have in mind. Death by my own hand. Death or flight to France or Spain would have been a hundred times better. Not a day passes without Innocent sending someone to spy on what my men and I are doing. Indeed, two days ago I found one on top of some scaffolding. Without letting myself be seen, I took him by the scruff of the neck and shouted, What are you looking for, dog? To be thrown below? To leave. To abandon everything, when Benini was entrusted with what was mine by right. The idea of the Fountain of Four Rivers was mine. I was the one who found the way of bringing water into Piazza Navona. And what was my reward? Seeing others awarded what should have been mine by merit and good sense. I shouldn't have told my teams to start working here in St. John again. But I did it to prevent any of them stabbing the new teams that had already been called to carve and mould in their place. And now I hear around Rome that I've killed someone. In here, me. It's rage. What can I say? It's rancour, as black as night. And the more I force myself to do my best, the more the bitterness stings me, becoming pain that pierces all through my body.